Hi guys and welcome back to another video here on this channel. Hope you're all doing really well. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I transformed this lovely cane slash wicker swivel armchair into this really trendy and actually quite classical vintage modern I want to call it sort of styled chair which I absolutely love. It was a labour of love, it was a thrifted piece but I just find doing these sort of thrifts is just so rewarding and so satisfying and I thought I would take you along. So I'm actually halfway through uh, the process at the moment. I didn't vlog much of the first portion just because I was completely experimenting, seeing what worked, what didn't work. There was a lot of trial and error involved. So while I'm kind of messing around with things like that and on different measurements and things, I kind of need to be in my zone. I did to take a couple of clips along the way so I'll, I'll insert those as I'm kind of explaining the process. So we started off I say we, me and Alex went to collect this chair. In the pictures, it actually looked quite dark brown in colour, which I quite liked. I wasn't planning on changing that. However, when I got it home and I really saw it in some good lighting, it was varnished in this really horrible mahogany, ready brown colour. And the style just wouldn't work. So we live in an English country cottage um, and I do like a little bit of modern twist thrown in but anything too new or too of a wrong era really stands out in this sort of style of house so I decided to strip the varnish now the headache with stripping this varnish I cannot even begin to explain I started doing so many different things I was reading online that you shouldn't use any harsh chemicals you shouldn't sand it down and I was starting to think what on earth do I use I was trying with a vinegar water combination I was trying with all sorts and nothing was making this varnish budge not even a fraction so I decided to use paint stripper so I lathered everything up it said to leave it for an hour I left it for two because only certain areas were bubbling, not all of it was starting to bubble up, which is kind of what you want. Anyway, two hours went by and it still wasn't shifting. So anyway, I went in with a plastic scraper. I tried a steel wool sponge, which the internet told me not to do, but I was at this point desperate just to strip it back a little bit. Um, and that didn't work, so I even went to hand sand it down which got rid of some of the really thick layers of varnish that was on there, but it really didn't touch the rest. And I was starting to lose my mind. This was day one. And so day two came and I thought, no, I'm gonna get the electric sander out. I know I probably shouldn't, but at this point I thought, I've started, I have to finish. And so this layer of varnish has to come off. I actually prefer the hand sanded effect. And so I just continued hand sanding it. So I don't know, it's got, it's less red, can you see? But can you see like areas like here? Mm. But the problem is, is that if yeah. I start doing the stripping again, it's an, I've got to sand it again, otherwise you get the bubbles. What do you think? I think it gives it some character to be honest. Yeah, well, I, but I think it looks more distressed. I preferred it like this than yeah. before. Yes. It's nice. So I want this bit exposed, but this is not necessarily going to be exposed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it won't. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a cushion. But this bit will be exposed, and I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to a point where I was actually quite happy. It's ended up starting to take a more of a distressed look, which I wasn't actually mad about, and actually I really like. The redness had definitely gone, which was just brilliant. I did not like the red wood effect at all. So that was gone and I was happy. Um, and then I decided to treat it with this wood care wax, which has linseed in it, which is also really good for cane. So I lathered it up, but I did two coats of that and left it out to dry. So anyway, at this moment in time, the pieces are all in the garden of the chair. I'm quite happy with it now. Now that it's varnished and it's out there, it looks like a really nice distressed look and it actually gives it some age. Now the reason why I'm not sure if it's quite vintage is because of the swivel system that's in it looks quite new. It's metal and it has some MDF um, covering underneath so it does look a bit more newer so I don't want to call it vintage but I wanted to give it that sort of vintage vibe. Once I did all of that I decided to work on the upholstery 
which I had so much fun doing. I say had, I've done half of it so far. I've got some still to do. First of all, let me show you what was on the chair originally. You could just reupholster as it is. I didn't really like the shape. I mean, it looks super comfortable. I cannot knock that, but it just doesn't look like the kind of style that I want in this room. Yeah, I decided to cut it. Now, I wasn't sure what the condition of the inside of this was going to be, so I was keeping my mind open on this. And so I ripped up the old covering and actually I was really surprised to see that actually the foam and the wadding that was inside was completely brand new. So I thought, fine, we'll keep the filling and we'll just reshape it. Okay, so this is the um, chair with the cover taken off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually chop this kind of across here just to give it a bit more of a modern sheet look and just so you can see some of the detailing of the actual chair. Um, yeah, let's hope I don't get it wrong because I only get one chance. And then to create its own little headrest for the back, which could either be rested on top of the lower part of the cushion to extend the back area, or you could use it as a headrest at the top. I just felt with the old cushioning, it was just hiding the entire thing and you just really couldn't appreciate the beauty of it. So I had a little sketch, I had a little think, I decided to do all the measurements for the pieces that I wanted. I cut them up and sort of shaved them over and then used the wadding to kind of sort of smooth out any rough edges to make it a little bit more rounded. And then I took the final measurements of these cushions in order to make the cushion covers. Now, I found this lovely fabric, which I was actually planning to use for a pair of square trousers. And it broke my heart slightly because I really had my heart set on those trousers, but I just thought it would work perfectly for this armchair. And I don't regret it at all. I've done one of the pillows already and it looks fab. So what I did is I wanted this sort of half moon, half cylindrical shaped headrest with little ties at the back so that I could tie it to the top of the chair. Here I am measuring all the pieces and drawing them all up with a fabric pen, cutting them all out and then I headed to the sewing machine. Um, and yeah, I was really happy how it turned out. There was a frantic moment where I thought, oh no, what have I done? It doesn't fit. And yeah, once I kind of rejigged all the sort of filling on the inside, it just looked fabulous. So I'll show you how that looks all together once I've got them all done. So then it was time to move on to upholstering the bottom half of the cushion. Now this is a little bit more tricky because it's so curved. So I decided to break it up into two sections, kind of a top and a bottom section. And what I decided to do just to get the best fit for this was to use an old piece of thrifted fabric and a fabric pen to almost drape the material over the actual base and draw where I wanted the seams to finish and end. So I did this for the back, first of all, and I tried it out. I then traced on those markings onto my final fabric, trying really carefully to kind of make some sort of symmetrical pattern. I'll pop up here because it was kind of a checkered, jacquard sort of style fabric. So I didn't want that to be majorly out of line or out of place. So I sewed the two pieces together and that so far is the back panel done. Now, today is going to be really exciting because it's going to all start coming together really nicely. I'm going to do the same sort of tracing effect with the front part of the chair and again transfer that onto the fabric that I'm going to be cutting up. And then I'm going to be sewing everything up. So, really happy so far. I thought I would take you along on the last stretch. So, let's crack on. I'm glad we made this um, case removable. Mm -hmm. 
for me, it's first gonna be all over. Your first gonna be all over. I thought it would be a really perfect space to be able to do some work, do some reading. Um, it has a lovely view onto the back garden and maybe even film some videos from this chair. Maybe some cosy little tea chats. So let me know if that's something that you want to see. If you enjoyed these sort of home DIY videos as well, do please let me know and I can definitely do some more of them. It's something I do really enjoy doing. So yeah, if this is kind of vibing with you as well, then I'd love to know. But otherwise, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Happy sewing. Bye.